What's going on, family in Christ? I got a very important word for you guys. And this one is going to be on falling from grace. Falling from grace. This is the appointed time for this word for sure. Because we are inevitably seeing a lot of people falling from grace. A lot of people that at once had high authority, who had high callings, who were once operating by partnering with God, then went into their own selfish ambitions, are completely just disrespected the Holy Spirit, or etc. They didn't listen to God's direction, went their own way because they had their own, they had deceit formulated in their heart, which came through the enemy or it came through their own personal gains and etc. Right? So God is tearing down their kingdoms. It's just that simple. He's been speaking this for a few years now, and we see it happening in a rapid rate or at a rapid rate at this very moment. So I got this word, I believe the day before yesterday, and God pressed on me this morning to go ahead and deliver it. So we're going to do what the Lord says. We're going to be obedient, and we're going to give you some context, and we're going to read some scripture. You already know. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pray this in and get straight into the word. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for allowing me to be your vessel, to bring truth to your people. I pray that as we see these different people fall from grace, that we have humility built in our heart to not laugh, to not mock, to not be just how they were as they were in positions of power, but to show the heart of Christ. Show grace if grace is supposed to be shown. And if it is not, may we be those people that you have been calling and step up to the plate the proper way. Father God, may you get all the glory out of absolutely everything that we do. May everything that we touch have your name and have your hand attached to it. And may we rebuke the enemy every single time he comes in with a offer that counteracts the offer that you've given us, which is salvation, which is grace through Christ Jesus, which is repentance, and the kingdom of heaven. So, Father God, may you touch this video. May you touch every word that comes out of my mouth and put your anointing on it so that it may bless the hearer. And may you rebuke the enemy in every single attempt that he may send forth to stifle the receptiveness of this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So, let's go ahead and hop in. So, this is how you'll know somebody has fallen from grace. So, you ever notice how people who are really on fire and walking in power eventually get stagnant and stop moving the way that they used to move? Stop being on fire the way that they used to be on fire. Maybe they step away. Maybe the messages that they're giving out has no real backing of the Holy Spirit behind it anymore. Things of that nature. That is one indication that that person has fallen from grace. That person has put himself or herself in a state of bondage throughout some kind of sin, maybe some kind of warfare tactic of the enemy. It doesn't always have to be them falling into sin, right? It could be something that warfare has been placed on them and now they're in a stifled place, right? But they are fighting, maybe, or they are succumbing to the warfare. But nine times out of 10, that person has fallen from grace. Or in other words, they have stopped partnering with God, right? So that's important. And they have taken matters into their own hands. And they will now be attempting to create their own power. So, that's huge. When you don't partner with God, what does it mean to partner with God? It means that when you go out here, and especially in ministry, I'm talking about people in ministry right now. Or I'm talking about people that God has raised up, right? In some form, some some way, some fashion. It doesn't necessarily have to be ministry. It could be business. It could be teaching. It could be the hospital, whatever. If God has raised you up to be somebody who is supposed to be helping his people in some way, some form, some fashion, you have to partner with God. You have to partner with God. Because if he's raising you up, you are going to need his hand to sustain Every single thing that he's walking you into. You cannot go your own way. Because if you go your own way, you are going to have to create your own power. And if God has taken you from, a, from this level and put you on this level, that means his power is the one that exalted you. And that means you don't have the ability 
to sustain that level without his power. So just imagine you trying to create your own power in a level that you were never powerful enough to achieve anyways. You're going to look crazy. It's going to show. It's going to be very evident, just like it's very evident over a person who does walk with the Holy Spirit. And eventually you're going to fall. That is what we're talking about right now. We're, we're talking about a fall from grace. All right. So we're going to jump right into scripture so this can explain itself through the word of God. So in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 15, and I'm going to be reading this out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. Now, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. Saul's servant said to him, Behold, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. So let's give a little bit more clarity on this scripture. King Saul was a man that God exalted. He had no confidence in himself before he got exalted. He didn't believe in himself. So obviously he knew he didn't have the power to be in any of these levels. God exalted this man and made him king. Understand this. And if you don't go read the scriptures for yourself and you will understand it. So God exalted this man and made him king. And when he made him king, he gave him specific instructions. That's for somebody out there. When God exalts you or when God puts you in a certain position, he's going to give you specific direction and instructions. And you need to follow that in full. Don't waver from it. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it because you're going to end up like this man. So what happened to Saul? He was told to go into a city, right? Go into an area and destroy that area. The area was full of wicked, nasty, perverted people, right? It was full of people that God was getting rid of. He told him not to save anything. God knows better than we know. So if he's telling us to get rid of everything, that means that something that's attached to this area is accursed, right? There's, there's something accursed on this area. And if we keep any of it, it's going to be something that's going to make us accursed, right? Or it's going to put something on us that we shouldn't have on us. So he told King Saul specifically, you kill every woman, child, man, animal, everything. Don't keep nothing. Kill everything. Get rid of everything in this area. So what Saul did was he disobeyed the Lord. He feared the people more than he feared the Lord. So instead of him going in and doing exactly as the Lord said, he kept some of the stuff. He kept the king of this area as a trophy or whatever the case may be for the people because the people wanted to keep it. Right. And he kept also other items as well. And when he did this, he encountered a fall from grace. So the same mantle that God gave him because God saw goodness in him and God seen things in him that he wanted to exalt him for now got ripped completely away because he was disobedient to God's voice. That's very important. Because a lot of people that we're seeing getting their mantles ripped away right now are those very same people. They're Saul's. They're people that are disobedient to God's direction and they're going their own way. And God is like, nah, that's not going to happen. So he's ripping their, their mantles apart and he's giving them to people who will step up to the plate and partner with God correctly and obey God and not exalt themselves. Stay in their place and let God do his thing through them. Understand that. So we're going to jump right back into the context. So look, we see here that King Saul, who was once very low in nature, are not looked upon as much and even lacked confidence in himself. But the Lord anointed him and made him king, raising him above his means. He disobeyed God by not doing as God instructed him to do and instead being afraid and wanting to please the people over fearing and wanting to please God. And then he fell from grace. God took his hand off of him and sent in a demon or evil spirit to torment him. Understand that the scriptures say that God sent this, this, this demon in to torment him. Didn't say that Satan sent it. So who's the real power here is what y'all need to understand. A lot of people on here are afraid of Satan. Satan doesn't do anything unless God allows it to happen. I need y'all to understand that. So this evil, wicked demon that came in to torment Saul was actually sent by the hand of the Lord. Understand that. So it is important to note that even though he did no longer have the hand of God on him, he still remained in power and authority. As God was building up 
his replacement. That is huge. That is huge. There's people right now that have already fallen from grace. And people don't believe it. There's prophets out here calling these people out and people are bashing the prophets saying, no, this man is a man of God or this woman is a woman of God because they stay in power, meaning they still have their churches. They're still on stages doing music. They're still making music videos. They still got 100 million followers. OK, maybe not 100 million, but they still got a lot of followers. And so people on the outside looking in, they think, well, if God still is allowing him to have all of these followers and have all of this stuff then he must still have his hand on it. But as we can read from the scriptures, when Saul fell from grace and God took his hand off of him, Saul did not lose his position as king. He stayed the king and God then started to give his mantle to David, King David, and then he started to build David up to replace Saul. So he didn't right away lose his positioning. He just lost God's hand. That's one thing you need to understand. This is why we need to seek God and have God number one in our life. Not a pastor, not a preacher, not a prophet, not me, not him, not her, God. Because you will mistake somebody who has lost the hand of God for somebody who still has an anointing. Just because they have position, just because they have titles, just because they have churches, just because they have followers. This is why you need to know the scriptures, man. We're going to hop right back into this, okay? So check this out. So when I was receiving this word, I was getting a vision of Pastor Michael Todd. And I wrote this down so I can give it to you how the Lord explained for me to give it to you. So I was getting a vision when I was getting this word from the Lord of Michael Todd. And I know that name is going to ring bells. Specifically, I saw him putting on a show and he was putting on a show in the name of the Lord. Right. And he spit into his hand and he put spit onto a man's face. I'm actually going to put that video into this video so you can see what I'm talking about. I actually seen this in the vision that I, I seen this already in real life a long time ago. And it was very disappointing to watch. But when God was giving me this word, I seen it again inside of a vision as he was giving me the word. And this was going along with the word, right? So. You don't see it clearly yet. But you hear <laughs> And this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn away. <laughs> what, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is just as he's physically standing here, knowing what's coming, God's saying, Can you physically and spiritually? And emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty I'm gonna say it in a point just like that receiving vision from God might get nasty you mean God I just bought in crazy faith I just bought my dream car and now you're gonna ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoop day again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. And do you, do you hear and see the responses of the people? And he highlighted that his hand was not on this particular act, right? So, where he is more graceful for your personal mistakes, he will be less graceful when you sin against the Holy Spirit by lying and making it seem as if he is leading when he is not. So has that made this pastor fall from grace? 
Michael Todd, it is not for me or anybody else to say, okay? It is up to God, and under the new covenant, God does allow sincere repentance for sins, but blaspheming the Holy Ghost will not be tolerated. And so I want to give a lot of clarity right here on what I just said about Michael Todd. I am in no way saying that Michael Todd has fallen from grace, okay? I The Lord gave me that specific scenario to highlight things that people do in his name that he didn't tell them to do. He didn't tell Michael Todd to spit in his hand and put spit on that man's eye. He did not tell Michael Todd to do that. Michael Todd got up there and acted like he was working through the Holy Spirit when he did that. That is not something God told him to do. Now, did that make him fall from grace? I absolutely do not know. God didn't tell me yes or no on that. All he told me was that particular piece of the context that I just gave y'all. It's really not up it's really not up to us as humans to determine what God is doing when it comes to removing or putting his hand on another person. It's up to us as humans, especially as his mouthpieces, to just speak what he says to speak. If he says to say for sure, for sure, that he has taken his hand off of this person and that person has fallen, then yeah, we're going to speak that. But he didn't tell me to say that. So I don't know for sure if, if Michael Todd has fallen from grace. But I do want you guys to understand that that particular act, for sure, for sure, did not come from God. I do know that for sure because the Lord told me that. And this is another reason to not follow a pastor, especially one that has these super big mega churches and that are super famous, right? And I'm not saying God does not rise his people up to be big and to do big things because he will. But when you start getting super theatrical like Michael Todd gets... That's when you got to start questioning some stuff like, hey, is this dude really operating out of the spirit of the Lord? So understand that. All right. So like I said before, do not say more than I've said here. I'm not saying anybody has fallen from grace. I'm saying that that act that he did was not of the Lord. OK, so we're going to jump right back into the context. So it's important to understand closeness with the Lord will inevitably touch your senses. And when he said that, I got this. I got spidey senses like my spidey senses is tingling. <laughs> So basically, when you're close to the Lord, you have like these spotty senses on you whenever something is happening that's not of God. So I'm sure there was a lot of people that watched that when Michael Todd did that and their spotty senses went off. Right. Like if y'all know anything about that, <laughs> I'm sure some of y'all have seen Spider-Man. So if y'all know anything about spider senses tingling, I'm sure they went off and they seen that. They're like, hold up. That's not of the Lord. But there's going to be those people who aren't following the Lord for themselves and are following these theatrical pastors and they're going to be like, no, that wasn't the Lord. The Lord told him to do that. Absolutely not. That's not how the Lord get down. So when the person you are following has fallen from grace, it is important to note just because they have fallen due to their own personal ambitions. It does not mean that the Lord was never with them. It just means that he isn't with them anymore. And it is also important to note that when he was with them, and when they were obedient, they did receive real words. All right. So let me stop there and give you some more clarity on that. That is huge. And that's very important to understand. Just because people fall from grace. I'll use TDJ as an example because he's the one that's popping in my head right now. Just because he has fallen from grace. It does not necessarily mean that he has never in his entire life been a man of God. I cannot say yes, he was or no, he wasn't when it comes to T.D. Jakes. But what I'm saying is there has been many of people that came out and gave real prophetic words in their life that came out and did real feats for the Lord. Even in the scripture that we just read with King Saul, he was real at one point. That's why God actually rose him up. But then he got disobedient. And once God took his hand off of him, that's when he started to do all the negative stuff. Right. That's when he started to operate out of the enemy's spirit and not of God's spirit. So I said that to say, and the reason why God is highlighting that part of it, because there's people in congregations that were under prophets, under pastors who were once real. And then they stopped partnering with God and they got into their flesh. Right. And they allowed Satan to be the person who they shook hands with and they fell from grace. But. The people in the congregation start to feel like they had absolutely no discernment the whole entire time. They're like, I should have known that this pastor was fake. I thought he was real because he did this before he did that before. 
Don't feel bad about that, family. You should feel more bad about putting the pastor above God because if God was the one in the number one spot, you would have caught on immediately when that pastor fell from grace because you were so in tune with the Holy Spirit already. You know when somebody has stopped operating out of the Holy Spirit and started operating out of their own power, out of the power of the enemy. You'll know that. So you should be more concerned about keeping God in a place where you know his voice above everybody else's voice versus being mad at yourself for believing in a pastor who was once real and then fell from grace. Understand that. So to wrap this up, God highlighted what I just spoke to you guys because some people bash these folks and they discredit their entire walk as if everything they have ever done had ill motives attached to it. And then the people who were following these guys, these pastors, these prophets, these evangelists, when they were really partnered with God, they started to feel terrible about their discernment. So this is why we need to place God in the number one spot and keep our pastors and everything else secondary. So when these falls happen, we can discern, we can pray, and we can move on if prompted. Now, this word was sent directly from the Lord. I was in my prayer closet. I had just got out of prayer, which I do every day. And the Lord downloaded this to my spirit. So this is a timely message. Like I said, he pressed on me today to go ahead and get it out because we're going to see a lot of people fall from grace. We are already seeing it. And the next people that he rises up, he's rising us up right now. I say us because I'm one of them. He's rising up his mouthpieces right now. Okay. And he's doing it strategically. He's not just like pushing you out into the forefront. That wouldn't be smart. That wouldn't be God. That wouldn't be setting you up for success. It would be setting you up to fail just like all of these other pastors that are now being taken out of position have failed. They were risen up too quickly. They were risen up without the proper testing to understand if their heart was even really with God or not, or if they selfish motivation would take over. God is not doing that in this hour with the people that he's raising up. With his remnant, he's not doing that. What he's going to do is he's going to put you through a lot of testing. I am going through so much testing and I'm so thankful for it because the more testing you pass, the higher he takes you and he's going to take you into wisdom first. What God is going to do first, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this revelation. What God is going to do first is he's going to work on the inside of you first before he presents you to the outside world. What does that mean, Jerron? That means he's going to work on your inner man. He's going to work on your spirit first. He's going to make sure you write in the inner before he puts you into position. He wants to be able to trust his people this next time around. Because you know, all of these other pastors and all of these other evangelists and, pro and prophets and, and every title you want to put into the, the mix of this, they've all disrespected God's trust. They've all disrespected the name of the Lord. They've all had selfish ambitions and put themselves above what God had told them to do went above his direction, added to his, his words, or taken away from his words. They've all done this. And that's why they're being taken out of position. They're being replaced with the people that God can trust. So let's take heed to this. Really ponder on this message. If you got to rewind it back so again, you can catch it in spirit. I do recommend that you do that. And really my biggest recommendation is allow God to mend those broken parts inside of you before even asking for a position, before even asking for a wife, before even asking for a million dollars, before even asking for um, houses and cars and things of that nature. Ask for wisdom. Ask to be a better person. Ask to know him on a more personable level. Ask to know his word on a deeper level. Ask the right questions, man. Or seek the right things. You know what I'm saying? Seek the right things. Get right with him on a intimate, interpersonal level. So then when he rises you up, you don't become these guys that can even get a selfish ambition attached to you. I am becoming so in love with the Lord. There's absolutely nothing I'm going to do to disrespect him. And if my human does get in the way, which it inevitably will, I'm going to repent immediately. I'm going to rebuke the devil immediately. And I'm going to stay partnered up with my father. There's no other way to do this. So I pray that I bless you. Mighty name of Jesus. You know the Lord loves you.
he wouldn't even be sending us out here to give you all of these messages and try to get you on point if he didn't love you. I love you as well. And um, stay the course. It's coming. It's time, baby. Jesus' name.